Hello and welcome! I'm Joanna Junak and this is GFN News on GFN.tv. Mexico has completely banned cigarette smoking in all public places. Previously, the smoking ban only applied to public transport, bars, workplaces and restaurants. From 15 January this year, the government has expanded the legislation to include all indoor and outdoor public spaces. Thomas O'Gorman is an ex-smoker and vapor since 2016 as well as co-founder of ProVapor Mexico and a member of INCOS board. Thomas has given us more details regarding the current situation in Mexico. Thank you, Thomas, for joining us today. First of all, why did the government introduce the law banning smoking in Mexico? Well, the, the law was modified uh, last year, and what our government did was a they issue uh, an administrative regulation, a set of rules, in order to apply or enforce the the law, uh, the tobacco law. Now, this 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 set of rules called Reglamento in in Mexico is is uh, very strict regarding the advertising and promotion of tobacco products, and have, and it also has. Uh, regulated where you can smoke, the, the, the smoking places or where it is done to smoke. And the problem is that the regulation that they, they have issued is so strict that it is going to be quite difficult to find a place where a smoker can have a cigarette. But uh, another problem is that they are also including in this in this band with a very obscure language, uh, vaping. So in, in theory, according to this, this set of rules, this reglamento, uh, the smokers and vapors can only can only consume their respective products in these in these uh, exclusive places. Which, uh, if you if you see the rules, like for instance, the the, the distance uh, they have to be apart from any other places, the the aspect that they cannot be surrounded even by a wall, and and another regulations, it's going to be in a city quite difficult to find a, a place where you can smoke or have a vape. You have mentioned advertisement and promotion. Are they also banned now? Well, uh, let's, we have to distinguish and, and we have to give you some, some presence. Advertising was tightly regulated since 2008. Now it has been completed, completely banned. And that is regarding tobacco products. Uh, the law does not mention anything about about vaping and remember vaping is 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 banned in mexico the, the commercialization of vaping products is banned promotion was already banned uh since 2008 so what they did is that they cancelled the very few spaces that tobacco companies had to, to make some kind of advertising but they also introduced in this reglamento a rule where where they say that shops or, or brick, uh, brick and mortar stores, uh, they cannot even show the products. So if, if you go to a, a convenience store or any place to, to buy some cigarettes, you won't be able to see the, the products. They have to be hidden from the public's view, the consumer's view. Because of this new law, there are many places where smoking is now prohibited. Can you tell us where you can no longer smoke? almost everywhere. Uh, they have introduced a concept of, uh, of collective concurrence spaces. So you cannot smoke in beaches, you cannot smoke in parks, you cannot smoke in terraces, you cannot smoke in balconies, in, in almost in every place where, where people might be able to gather or to, to reunite. But uh, also there's some rules that uh, says that the smoking is only allowed if, if the space where you are is uh, considered uh, an exclusive smoking zone, which has to be in the open air, it, it cannot have even a roof, even a wall. Um, it has to be something like 10, 10 meters, 30 feet, about like 30 feet away from any entrance. I mean, uh, the thing is that uh, all these restrictions make almost impossible to find a place where to smoke. And uh, what really concerns me is that 
they are using a very obscure language, calling, calling them nicotine products, but not defining the scope of the term. And using this term of nicotine products, you might, or they might, I mean, they are considering that the that vaping is included. But vaping with nicotine is the, the law is so so uh, deficiently made, and and this reglamento that you might even argue that vaping without nicotine can be done almost everywhere. I mean, there is no no provision re uh, regulating vaping without nicotine, but because they say tobacco product, uh, sorry, they say nicotine products, uh, then you can you can uh, conclude you can you can think that vaping with nicotine is can only be done in, in the smoking places, which is kind of of absurd uh, for several reasons. First of all, the, the government is is tightening the regulations regarding tobacco, but they are not allowing smokers to have alternatives because banning is uh, uh, vaping is bad. Second. If vapors can only smoke uh, vape, where the, where people smoke, then they uh, the government is putting them in a place where they will be uh, uh, reading smoke, but also they might uh, get back to smoking because of being with with the smokers. And all these policies and all these rules regarding smoking places and vaping places, uh, what well, they are not evidence based. So, so the problem is not only that a positive goal, which is uh, reducing tobacco smoke, uh, uh, tobacco consumption, that uh, combustible tobacco consumption, this is a positive, a positive uh, or a valid goal. They are using very restrictive, and I believe contrary to human rights regulations, and they are denying smokers and vapors the legal access to vaping products which it's also against human rights. What are the consequences if someone breaks this law? According to, to the ruling, these this rules, um, if you smoke where you are not allowed, the procedure or the manager of the establishment where you are smoking uh, has to ask you to, to, to stop doing it, or if you, you don't, he has to, to ask you to leave the place. According to, to the anti-tobacco law, there is a fine of kind around now, maybe five, five, up to five hundred or five five hundred and forty dollars if, if you if you smoke uh and according to the reglamento, even be uh in a in a place where you are not allowed to. And if you um made this conduct again, if they apply you the file and then you do it again, it can be doubled. And the law also also talks about the possibility of being arrested up for a term of 36 hours, which I am not quite sure if it will be applied, applied to smokers, but the law is, uh, the, the, the general tobacco law does, does consider the, also the arrest. But, I think that the, the 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 first sanction that can be applied to a smoker or a vapor, if they vape in a place where they are not allowed to, is going to be a a, a, a fine of up to five hundred dollars. And the last question, Thomas. Now that smoking is banned, do you think people will start looking for safer nicotine products, or are they also banned in Mexico? It's it's very difficult to to say. The smoking is not better completely, but yes, they have made very difficult for a smoker to to smoke in a place different than that his house, his home. Uh, will this make people to, to, to look for alternatives? If you consider that they are also uh, considering smoking as, as using safer tobacco products, because that, this reglamento, uh, these rules, uh, when they define the uh, fumar, which is smoking, they say that it is not also using a tobacco product, but uh, a combustible tobacco product, but they also include there the use of, of uh, nicotine products. And in their, in their thinking, nicotine product is, is a, a, it's a, a, even a, an e-cigarette. If you ask me, some Bolognese pasta is a nicotine product since tomato has, has nicotine. Well, well that's, that's their thinking. Uh, 
I, what worries me is that they're going against size. Uh, if, if you recall PHE in around, I don't know, 2017 or 18, they issued some points regarding, uh, some guidelines regarding where to allow vapors to vape. And one thing they made clear is that the, the government should make a clear distinction between vaping and smoking, and they are not doing this. So, so if they're not doing this and they are attributing to vaping, uh, terrible damages and, and risks, like if it was a tobacco, well, people will be dis misinformed and they won't, uh, transit to, to safer alternatives that. And, and I remember that also safer alternatives in Mexico are, are banned from commercialization. So it's going to be difficult, but yes, I think that some people will try to, to, to start vaping and maybe try still vaping, which is not correct, but, but they might do it. Thank you, Thomas. That's all for today. Tune in next time here on GFN TV or on our GFN TV podcast. You can also find transcriptions of each episode on the GFN TV website. Thanks for watching or listening. See you next time.